Okay, I think it's about time for some rants. So I'm going to rant. Rant. There. I rant. But seriously, it's time for some rants. And I think I'm going to start off with things that annoy me about computers. So here we are. In the operating system selection menu in my computer, and you might have noticed that I've put a clock in front of the screen, because we're going to see just how long it takes from the moment I select the operating system I want to use until the computer is actually usable. So here we go. So Windows 7 is loading up. Let's just speed this up a little bit. Here comes the desktop. And almost all my icons have gone blank. And the desktop is loaded, so that means the computer's ready to use, right? Nope. So let's try to go onto YouTube. So, loading up Firefox, and nothing happens. It's still busy, meaning I have to wait even longer. The desktop is already loaded, so it should be ready to use. And actually, come to think of it, did I try to load up Firefox? Well, obviously I didn't, and only just thought I did, because nothing's happening. So, let's do this again to make absolutely sure. And again, it's as if I hadn't done anything at all, but then all of a sudden, two Firefoxes load. So the computer did acknowledge both of those times I wanted to load up Firefox, and it's taken this long before it starts to load. So here we are loading up. It's loading up. Still loading. Still loading. Still loading. Well, at least we got my subscription page up now, but my Gmail is still loading. And now it's just given up and gone blank. So let's just try to reload the page. And finally, after almost four whole minutes, I can finally view my mail and watch YouTube. You make me wanna rant! So what else can I rant about? Oh yeah, food! When you get a brand new bag of potato chips, or corn chips, or crisps, or whatever you want to call them, it looks like the bag is nice and full, but you open the bag, and two-thirds of that space that could be populated by the good and salty stuff is full of air. I mean, why? They could easily squeeze twice as much in there, but nope. I'm paying for a bag mostly full of air. Those film lids on food containers. You peel off one corner, and it just rips off right there. So you go around to the next corner, try to peel it off from there, same thing happens. Next corner, same thing. Final corner, still the same thing. I'm never going to get to my food. What do they stick these things on with? Super glue? And this is what it's like living around here. I live next to a bunch of drunken hooligans. I'm not exactly sure where they are, and they might be over there, but it's too dark to see anything. It sounds more like it's coming from this direction. I can hear them, but I don't see them. I mean, do you see anybody there? But this is what it's like almost every single night. And none of them are English anyway. Wish they would just sort off back to Trash Canistan or wherever the hell they come from. And now on to something that irks me about gaming on the PC. So, here I am, playing Crash Insane Trilogy. Now, my rant's not about this game. It's something that PC games do in general. I mean, I just freaking love this game. I mean, how could you not like this when it's got adorable stuff like this in it? <clears throat> Getting back to the matter in hand. Look at the CPU usage. At first you might be thinking, well, that's not too bad, it's only taking up about 35%, what are you complaining about? Well, this is telling me that the game isn't taking full advantage of my CPU. 
If it was taking full advantage of the CPU, like, say, video editors do when you're rendering a video, we could easily squeeze an extra 100% performance out of this. So it's almost as if I'm running this game on a computer that has a CPU that's only half as good as what I actually have. Please, game developers, take note of this. Oh, she's mad at me now. This is something that really annoys me when I go to websites. I'm just scrolling down the page and all of a sudden, one of these stupid pop-ups comes up that dims the screen and I'm sure its only purpose is just to annoy you. I don't give a damn, just get out of my face. So let's talk about updates. Now I'm not talking about that Windows 10 update that deleted everybody's files, but just those intrusive updates when you're trying to do something, or updates that completely screw something up. So here I am in paint.net. Now, as soon as I loaded the program, it told me it wanted to update. But I don't want to update because I've got things to do. So I told it that it can update when I exit the program. So, I've pretty much finished on this now, so let's close paint.net. So it says it will go and install the update. Okay, fair enough, let's go and do that. But, the update doesn't install. I've got to update something else so I can update this. Alright, so let's download this update. Press the big orange download button. Select the right one for my computer. And... It doesn't download. It's just sitting there at zero. And I left this for about an hour and came back and it was still at zero. It hadn't done a thing. And now those intrusive, stubborn updates that will not get off your case until you deal with them. So as you can see here, we have IOBit Installer that wants me to upgrade to version 8. Alright, let's do this. Then maybe it will shut up. Oh, so I see how it is. You want me to upgrade, but you also want my money. Well, fudge you. Fudge you. I ain't gonna. Stubborn programs removal? Yeah, well, here's one stubborn thing right here. And gosh darn it, this crud never ends. I've only had this computer on for five minutes, and already there's something that wants to update. Even my Adobe Flash is in on this, advertising stuff that I'm not interested in upgrading to. And now we're going to have a look at something annoying that Steam does. So, let's load up one of the very few games in my Steam library. Let's load up, oh, I don't know, Sonic Mania. So, double click on the game, and you guessed it, Steam has got to update. Now I'm somebody who doesn't have Steam running the instant the computer starts. I only have Steam running when I want to play any of the games that are in my Steam library. But we've got to wait for it to update. Now sometimes it only takes a few seconds, and other times, like this time, it's taking for absolute ever. I just want to play my game, you know? Right, so this next one isn't so much about updates, but I think it deserves a mention. So, I was going to do an experiment that used the headphone output of my tablet, and I was going to feed that into this little amplifier circuit that I'd made to see how well it would work. So I load up my music player, only to be greeted by this lovely message. Yeah, because some online service is no longer available, it won't let me play my music. It's ridiculous. I'm not even trying to play something that's online. It's on its own internal storage. But because this online service has stopped, it goes, screw you, we're not going to let you use this anymore. So that's real nice, isn't it? And there's no way to get out of this no offline mode or anything like that. So I go into the file browser thinking maybe I can get it up from there, but nope. Same thing. So going back to updates, YouTube has updated itself so many times that a lot of the plugins on my web browser no longer work. Now, back in the caveman times of 2009, YouTube used to show the video's rating under the thumbnail. So, if I came across a video that interested me, but it had a very bad rating, I'd know to stay away from it. I'd know it wasn't worth my time. But they took that feature out. 
So now, you don't know whether a video is worth watching or not. And I've come across so many videos that sounded interesting to me, but when I came to watch them, I found they were absolute garbage and had a very bad rating. If I had a penny for every time that happened since they took that feature out, I'd be a millionaire by now. So I came across this browser plugin, Ratings Preview for YouTube. And what it does is it puts the video's rating in the thumbnail so you can tell whether a video is worth your time or not. And this actually worked pretty well. But then YouTube did some updates, and that plugin no longer works. So we're right back to square one. Or maybe square two, I don't know. And now one final thing I want to rant about is when people release new versions of their software that actually breaks something that was working perfectly in an earlier version. So as you probably know, I like to make videos. Now I have the K-Lite codec pack, which is like the ultimate all-in-one codec pack. It has everything, including a pretty good motion JPEG codec, which is what I use. Or at least, it used to be good. The motion JPEG in the modern versions of the K-Lite codec pack is extremely buggy. But at least you got to give them credit for being creative in the ways it glitches out. So, after I render a video in Adobe Premiere or something, sometimes I'll get a video that looks like absolute crud. Sometimes I'll get a video that's completely corrupted. Sometimes I'll get a video that's completely unplayable. Sometimes it'll just outright crash. And sometimes, if I'm lucky, it will actually render a video that's playable and looks good. And I should remind you that I'm not adjusting the settings in any of these. Sometimes it just takes several attempts before I actually get a video. Now earlier versions didn't have this problem. It would render the video perfectly every time. But that's not available anymore. It's ridiculous. Anyway, that's the end of the rants. I'm sure I'll find more stuff to rant on later on, but until next time, goodbye.